Hello all, I'm here with a new video for you today, and today I have got Linux minus GNU instead of GNU slash Linux, which... Anyway, today we're looking at Alpine Linux. Now, Alpine Linux has a couple of great things, very interesting things that sets it apart from other Linux distros. Like, for example, that it does not use the GNU utils, but instead uses the BusyBox utils. It also does not use SystemD, but uses OpenRC instead. And, as you will see later in the video, this creates some very interesting differences that actually do impact the end user, and some of them I actually liked quite a bit. So, here we are at Alpine Linux. One of the great thing about this distro is is that when you use this distro, if you listen very, very carefully, you can sometimes hear Richard Stallman screaming, It's getting Linux! Yeah! And the reason for that is because Alpine Linux does not use the GNU utils. Instead, it uses BusyBox, as I mentioned a minute ago. But without further ado, let's get into it, and I'm going to show you the Linux distro that Hannibal used to invade Rome. No joke. Hannibal actually used this distro in about 217 to invade Rome. This is how he got over the Alps. We all know this. That's why it's called Alpine Linux. There we go. We're in. So when you get to that first login screen right after you boot where it says localhost login, what you do there is you type in root and it comes with no root password by default. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to run the Alpine setup script. And that is a very, very complicated, very, very long command. I, I really like, I really recommend like you really look this one up and comp and a uh, copy paste because it's very long. It's very difficult to remember. It is setup dash Alpine. And if you can't detect the sarcasm in that last statement, then I can't help you. All right. So we're at the key map. US is here, even though it's a little hard to spot. But we're going to go U.S. U.S. And that gives you your standard U.S. English keyboard layout, which is... All right. So we're going to go system host name. For this, we're going to go Alpine test. Test. Okay. And I'm going to... You want a second here? I'm going to get rid of that. For the interface, we're going to go E0. And for the IP address, we're just going to go DHCP. Everything's pretty normal there. No manual configuration. This is because we're running on a uh, virtual machine, so it's going to pick up everything as wired connection. All right, so the password for root is going to be... There we go. We're going to go, which time zone are you in? If you're Canadian, this can get a little weird. Because, watch this. I'm going to go America. And I'm going to pick a city in my time zone. Halifax. And there we go. Now, do you want to know what the weird part about that is? Halifax is not in America. So they must be taking, like, America to mean all of the Americas. If, like, there's a bunch of cities up there from, like, South America as well. But I still find that kind of amusing. So we're going to go none here. Uh, for this, we're going to leave the default. For this, first, what we're going to do is we're going to type C to enable the community repos. And then we're going to type F. And what this is going to do is it's going to run a script that's going to find us the fastest repo. I actually find this part super cool because, and I wish other distros had something like this in their installation where it would just find you, or it would just run a script and find you the fastest a uh, mirrors because that would just make life so much easier than guessing or just going back to the same ones all the time. All right, so time to set up a user. We're going to go with test user. Yes, that's his full name. His full name is indeed test user. None. We're going to go open SSH there. And now for the disks. Do not select none on this part. If you select none, it will literally just not install your system. So instead, what you're going to do is you're going to type in SDA or whatever the label of the disk you're using is. And 
Now here it gives you a bunch of options. Untangle it gives you the help option as the default. A um so I'm you know what for your guys' sake, I'm gonna actually go with the question mark here. And I'm gonna read this out. So sys mode is the mode for traditional disk install. The following partitions will be created on the disk, boot, slash file system, and swap. That's very, very standard. Uh, there's data, which uses your disk for data storage and not for the operating system. There's crypt, which sets up everything encrypted. There's crypt sys, which sets up everything the same as sys, but enables encryption. And then there's LVM, which sets up everything up as an LVM. So what we're going to do this time is we're going to go just straight. But just know that the other options are here, including Crypsis and stuff like that. So you can actually probably make this very pretty secure if you wanted to. All right, we're going to erase the disks. And there we go. Installation is complete. So with me yakking and everything, it still took less than 10 minutes to install this. That's kind of insane. You probably won't see this 10 minutes in the video because I'll edit it all up. But I'm literally looking at the timer here right now. And yeah, less than 10 minutes. That's nuts. I'm loving Alpine so far. So we're going to go reboot. And here we are in the real thing. <laughs> so because I don't have sudo set up yet or anything like it. Well, first I got to get the virtual machine to capture my keyboard. That would help first, wouldn't it? There we go. Now we're in business. So first thing I'm going to do is APK update. Was that not just insanely fast? That is the thing I love about this distro. It is, let's see what how much RAM it's using right now. 122 megabytes of RAM being used right now. That is, for a 64-bit system, that is super tiny. I love it. I am absolutely, yeah, love it. All right, so we're going to go APK add pseudo. Be beautiful. Beautiful. Look how fast that installed. That's crazy. Anyway, all right, perfect. So we got that work. Now I'm going to show you guys exactly what I did. First, what I did is I went under the root user. I went nano slash APC slash sudoers. Okay. And then I went down to, so to clarify, this is how you add a user to uh, sudo under any system. And this is something that you have to do under any minimal install, including Alpine. So what you're going to do is what I just did there is nano slash etc slash sudoers. It doesn't have to be nano for the text editor, but that's what I prefer to use for this sort of thing. VI or Emacs will work too. And then what you do is you go down to where it says uncommon to allow members of group wheel to execute any command. And this is where you add the user right here. So in this case, I added test user and I gave it and I gave the whole wheel group the permissions to run the commands as root under sudo. I added in that line there, which is test user, all brackets, all colon, all, all. And what that does is that enables the test user to run any command with sudo, as well as any user under the wheel group. But then after that, so under nano, what you want to do is you want to hit control O to write and then control X to exit. And then after that, I simply ran that user test user. Let me make sure I get test user wheel. Yeah. And then after that, you just run the command add user test user or whatever user it's add user, your username, and then the group that you want to add it to. So in this case, it was add user test user wheel. So that's a very brief rundown of how to set up a pseudo user on pretty much any Linux system. So now. Now we're going to do something. Now I'm going to do something a little bit more fun. So let's go in and add the desktop. And let's see what that looks like. It would help if I put in APK install. No, it's, it's not install. I misread that. APK add. That was my, that's my bad. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do sudo setup desktop. Let's see what this does for us. We're going to go XF, XFCE. I think that's more sensible for... Oh, okay. So when you're running this, it does look like it pulls down quite a bit more than just a default pack. It just gives you like interesting, interesting. Okay, so... All right, cool. 
So when you run the set up a uh, desktop, it even adds the light DM as a uh, service. That's pretty cool. So it actually looks like I made a mistake a minute ago. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go reboot and we're going to see what this does for us. Pseudo reboot. Okay. Oh, perfect. It got us right in the light DM too. Oh, that is neat. This is actually a very, this is my first time. Like this afternoon is my first time actually running Alpine Linux. So that's why you've probably seen me make a couple of little mess ups, but man, as far as like minimal install processes go, this has been one of the easiest. This is so much easier than Arch. I'll put it here that way. Up, yeah, there we go. And we're going to log in. It's been a while since I've used XFC, so yeah. And it hasn't changed a bit. So the XFCE running right after login. Let's see how much it's RAM it's using. Oh, how much is it used? 415 with XFCE. XFCE, yeah, it's quite a bit more than it used to back in the day. But no matter. Pretty, pretty default looking a uh, XFC install, you know, nothing crazy. Let's see if I can fix the uh, resolution here. It actually did give us like, the, the resolution is just absolutely tiny. So there, that looks a lot better now, doesn't it? I bet I could have a lot of fun exploring different day, uh, uh, different desktop environments on this and such. Let's see what. Okay, it doesn't give us the XFCE system either, which is fine. It did give us Firefox for a browser though, which is kind of interesting. Let's see what happens if I run. This does use the BusyBox utils, and they actually you can kind of tell that the uh, the terminal is actually different. So we're now at 771 used. Very pretty light usage actually. Very quick, very snappy to run. I quite like that. Hmm. I haven't used XFC in a while, so you know what? Let's play around with that a little bit. Actually, let's see. How do we add a network manager? Hmm. Okay. All right. So, let's go. Here we go. So, to add the network manager, what we're going to do is... APK add network manager dash Wi-Fi. I'm not going to ever get over how fast this install stuff. Insane. Guys, I, I, I think I'm probably going to be a really big fan of OpenRC in the future, too, because OpenRC booted this system so fast. I try to get out of the habit of running sudo in front of everything, because that's a bad habit to get into, but so that's probably why you see me always forgetting to put sudo in first. We're going to go also sudo... As, okay, so this is my first time using OpenRC, too. And I have to admit, so far, I actually prefer it to System D. Now, ha this is not an in-depth research opinion or anything like that. This is just kind of first impressions. But the reason I kind of lean towards it is because a lot of what I like about System D is how easy it is to interface with. And OpenRC is... Seems to be just as easy, but a lot less bloated. There we go. I don't have to run level default. All right. Oh, there. Let's see if we can make this look a little better, too. Very bare bones. XFCE installed, but still like it well enough. That's our power manager. I was trying to figure out if that over there is a... Uh, was a system tray or if it was just one applet. Like I said, very, very basic install here. Doesn't come with any extra, th very many extra themes or anything like that. Oh, I definitely like that one more. Yeah, that's definitely better than the default theme. Actually, let's just see out of curiosity how we can add some XFCE themes help high. Okay, so, hmm. Other than that, so far I really, really like it actually. This. Like I said, it's a very basic a uh, XFCE theme. I'm actually going to try one thing here. See what happens if I say insert if I search XFCE. Hmm. Lots of themes. Is there an XFCE themes package in here? Let's see. Doesn't look like it. Actually, looks like it's fairly minimal in terms of the number of packages. Just looking over everything here now. Oh, one other thing I want to look for is. 
Okay, there's another thing that's interesting to note is that there's no, um, there doesn't appear to be a network plugin in here. I can't remember the general name of it, if X, under XFCE or if XFCE uses the GNOME one. I think it uses the GNOME, or at least used to use the GNOME one. I've been over on KDE for a while now, so I can't remember all the package names. But, I'm going to be honest, well, let's try one more thing. Because I'm going to add... I want to add the XFCE Task Manager and see what that shows me for resource usage. And I'm going to be honest with you, so far I absolutely love using it. The, um, the way the syntax works for it is very, very natural. Unlike a lot of, say, Arch, where it's like dash SYU, I much prefer like APK add. I find that makes a lot more sense to me. Add. And we're looking for XFCE4. Yeah, I got to make sure I spell it right. Literally say to myself, I gotta make sure I spell it right and then spell it wrong. I am really bad for that. So, memory usage on this is so pathetically low. And this has actually changed. I actually like this a lot more now. Yeah, I'm, the XFC Task Manager looks a lot better than the last time I used it. This is a very clean look. I like it. I, um, I'm probably, you know what? Keep an eye out for a future video because I might do a video on... I might do a bare metal distro review on Alpine Linux. I think that'd be kind of fun. This is definitely going to get a lot more use. Anyway, this is it for my first kind of first look at uh, Alpine Linux. And don't forget that this is totally the uh, distro that Edible used to threaten wrong. You know, I mean, like I said, he would have he would have won the second Punic War if Scipio hadn't have installed Arch. And by liking this video, you'll make Richard Stallman scream because, like I said, it's not GNU slash Linux. So every time you like it, he just screams like, no, nah, no, it's GNU now. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm probably the one person that's got the strongest opinion on YouTube about calling Linux GNU slash Linux. And I'm really actually quite against it. But for a number of reasons, including the fact that like Richard Stallman probably shouldn't be allowed within 150 meters of a school because of some of the things he said. But yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe. This is it for the uh, first look at Alpine Linux and pray every day.